With pro wrestling set to return to the island nation of Cyprus in October of 2023, let's take a look at the time one of pro wrestling's greatest world champions made a forgotten trip to the island nation of Cyprus. Pro wrestling is set to return to Cyprus for the first time on a regular basis in many years starting this October. Other than a couple of events in the 2000s, one we just learned of and don't have much information on yet, the pro wrestling industry has not been active in Cyprus in the modern era. However, that was not always the case. Pro wrestling historian Phil Lyons recently shared some information on the past history of pro wrestling in Cyprus in a pro wrestling history group I belong to on Facebook. Phil shared some details on Theophilos Tomasos, a Cypriot wrestler who had turned pro in the 1930s, but had previously been an Olympic wrestler representing Greece in freestyle wrestling at the 1928 Games in Amsterdam. Throughout the 1930s, Tomasos competed both on Cyprus and abroad, and was the island's most popular and successful native pro wrestler, and also promoted pro wrestling events in Cyprus for a time. Inspired by Phil's revelation that there was some type of pro wrestling scene in Cyprus dating back to the time before World War II, I decided to do some research of my own. What I was able to track down is pretty significant and something that I haven't seen shared elsewhere, either by pro wrestling historians or results databases. In the 1930s, Cyprus was a crown colony of Britain and, in turn, English was a common language used on the island, at least in the press and in government documents. One of the island's newspapers at that time, the Cyprus Mail, was entirely in English and serves as a great record for pro wrestling's past in Cyprus. Through old issues of the Cyprus Mail, I was able to track down some information on some pro wrestling matches in Cyprus involving Theophilos Tomasos. However, one of those matches stands out as being what is likely the biggest pro wrestling match and event in the history of Cyprus pro wrestling. On May 30th, 1937, multi-time pro wrestling world champion Jim Londos took on Theophilos Tomasos at what was described as Nicosia Stadium in Cyprus. This stadium is likely the original GSP Stadium in Nicosia, which at the time of its demolition in 1999 had a capacity of 12,000. According to the Cyprus Mail, the event brought an estimated 12,000 people to Nicosia and brought 7,000 paying spectators to the stadium with large crowds gathered outside the stadium trying to catch a free view. Despite the economic hardships and political turmoil being faced by the people of Cyprus during this time period, the Cyprus Mail reports that an estimated 5,000 pounds was pumped into the Nicosia economy by the visitors on the day of the match, which is equal to $9,195.65 in U.S. dollars, which would be equivalent to $193,723.61 in today's dollars with adjustment due to inflation and purchasing power. The Cyprus Mail estimated a total gate at the event of between 500 and 700 Cypriot pounds, with the latter being what was believed to be the closest estimate. The conversion of the Cypriot pound to U.S. dollars would equal to a gate of approximately $919.53, which would be equivalent to approximately $19,373.73 in 2023 U.S. dollars. Tickets for the evening ranged from 1 shilling to 5 shillings. 20 shillings made up a Cypriot pound at the time. And the Cyprus Mail indicated that every section of the stadium was packed, overall marking a pretty good day at the office for promoter Chris Acniatis. The match was also attended by the governor of Cyprus at the time, Sir Herbert Richmond Palmer, who was indicated as being accompanied by the commissioner, Mr. Montague, but it's unclear to me who this was and what they were the commissioner of, and the mayor of Nicosia, Themistocles Dervis. Londos's trip to Cyprus came during a rare period of the 1930s when he wasn't a reigning world heavyweight champion. 
Despite not being world champion at the time, his reception in the country was exceptional. The Cypress Mail wrote that Jim Londos has created enthusiasm that it is hard to believe could ever exist in Cyprus. This statement should be taken with a grain of salt, though, as during this time period, the people of Cyprus desired to be part of Greece rather than Britain, and these quotes are coming from an English newspaper. He was hosted at several receptions during his time on the island, and the false promise of his presence at an event at the Nicosia Stadium was even used as a scam to cheat Cypriots out of money. His presence also caused traffic backups due to the influx of people trying to catch a glimpse of the wrestling star. As for the Londos Tomasos match, the Cypress Mail described it as a wrestling match that there is no doubt will be remembered for many a day in Cyprus. Prior to the match, the ring announcer declared about the outstanding event in the sporting annals of Cyprus, and with the crowd on hand, the description of the match and the reception. This seems as if it could be true. The match was split into rounds and was set for eight rounds of ten minutes each. The Cyprus Mail commended both wrestlers on their performance but pointed out that Londos looked to be the superior wrestler. The first round started out as essentially a stalemate between the two wrestlers. The second round was where things started to open up more for Londos as he used scissor holds to wear Tommaso's down and connected in tossing Tommaso's to the mat a couple times to the delight of the crowd on hand. The third round saw Tommaso's begin to step up his offense, using some throws to neutralize Londos. However, as the Cypress Mail points out, Londos was quick to counter and escape. The fourth round seemed to be a bit of a back and forth again until Londos was able to lock Tommaso's in a leg submission that visibly wore the Cypriot down. The fifth round would be the last of the match, as Londos quickly connected on a devastating slam and followed it up with an excruciating hold that kept Tommaso's down for the count. Following Londos's victory, the fans apparently stormed toward the ring, cheering and hoping for a chance to hear Londos speak. Londos thanked the crowd and got a great reception from the fans on hand. Following the match, on Sunday, Londos traveled to Famagusta, Cyprus, on Wednesday, June 2nd, 1937, for an exhibition at GSE Stadium. Phil Lyons had shared a photo of Jim Londos in a post on the Wrestling Classics board in Famagusta in the past, and it doesn't appear as if Londos wrestled at all during this exhibition. Londos would then head to Limassol, Cyprus on Thursday, June 3, 1937 to referee a match between his former opponent Theophilos Tomasos and Christofides. I was unable to track down information on the outcome of that match or of Londos's performance as a referee. In July of 1937, the Cyprus Mail reported that promoter Chris Akniatis had declared that Jim Londos was prepared to return to Cyprus if a good match with a foreign wrestler can be arranged. However, it doesn't appear as if Londos ever returned to Cyprus for a wrestling match after the 1937 trip. Jim Londos is widely considered to be one of the biggest draws in pro wrestling history. His visit to Cyprus in 1937 and the impact it had on a nation going through political and economic turmoil, as well as the thousands of fans that came out to watch the match or just get a glimpse of the star wrestler, is further proof of his status as one of pro wrestling's all-time biggest draws. We may never have. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit more about a pro wrestling scene you hadn't checked out before. For more coverage of pro wrestling all around the world and the pro wrestling world map where we're working to list all of the world's wrestling promotions, be sure to visit WrestleMap.com. Also, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe so that you can catch future similar videos.